What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. If this location and outfit look familiar, it's not because I've been living in the woods and not changing clothes. I just, I, this is the location and I just uh, wrapped this day of shooting on my R7 long-term review video. So uh, if you thought that I came here just to record a long-term camera review, uh, I got you. I actually came here to photograph some fireflies. But I also bring that up because if you're curious about the camera that I'm going to be using, the R7, for today's photos, uh, be sure you go check out the review. I think that'll fill in some of the technical specs behind the photos that we're making, if you have that curiosity. If you just want to see the photos, I thank you for joining along. So I brought you today to, I'm going to take you to two locations to do firefly photography. Uh, first here is this woods behind me, which is one of my favorite locations and one that I've never featured firefly photography in on the channel before. So uh, a, a new location uh, there. And as a second bonus, uh, I'm also going to demonstrate a different processing and photographing technique for getting the fireflies. Uh, this is a technique that I myself have sort of devised mentally and never actually executed. And so we're going to go through that uh, learning process together. And I think we'll get a good result, but we'll see. The second location is a uh, native wildflower prairie preserve. And uh, that's that location I've featured several times, but it's definitely one of my favorites and a stunning place to photograph fireflies. So it's summer 2023, peak firefly season. Let's get into it. I'm actually standing in my composition here, so you can barely see my arm, and so that gives you a sense of the way I've got this shot. There's a big valley here, there's actually a creek down here. None of that's featured in the photograph. To the other side of all that uh, is the subject matter of the photo, and I've come down here well before the fireflies come out, because as you can see, this is a very heavily wooded area, and at the, by the time that, even well before the time that the sun sets down here, but especially after nightfall, it is impossible to see anything. So I'm not going to be able to get the camera focused. I'm not going to be able to get the composition set up. And so I've come down here before nightfall to get all of that work ironed out. Uh, and also so that you can see uh, sort of how I th have things set up here uh, in the woods. So uh, you're not probably going to be able to see me making the photo. And, uh, and so uh, this is as much explanation as I'm going to be able to give you, except to point out, hi, except to point out that the technique I'm going to be uh, using here is first to create an exposure right now while I'm on scene, a, a, a safety exposure that I can integrate into the final photograph if I'm not able to obtain detail at the light levels that are required to capture the fireflies. Because as you can imagine, that's a very uh, distinct difference in magnitudes of light levels between the fireflies and the dark woods. Um, and also I will point out that the after I capture that safety exposure and come back later, um, I'm going to be, isn't this just gorgeous? After the safety exposure uh, and returning later with a fresh battery, uh, we'll capture a time-lapse video of the fireflies at 30 second intervals of 30 second exposures. And I'll show you afterwards how I import all those photos into Photoshop to very easily uh, create a, a stacked merger of all the individual frames from the time lapse. So I uh, got we'll have the R7 set up on a time lapse mode. I've got the 50 millimeter lens on, just a regular Nifty 50, 51.8. But I'm using the R7 both because it's got a great easy time lapse mode. Um, but also because it gives me a little extra depth of field with the 50 millimeter uh, lens. If I were to do this on my full frame camera, I'd be at like 75, 80 millimeters way back behind this tree line and dealing with depth of field issues. So I think I'm gonna get a better result with the R7. We will, uh, I'll, uh, so the next piece of footage I think that you probably see in this video uh, is the time lapse that I record and then we'll get back together later in the studio on the computer and I'll show you how to cut a time lapse 
into a integrated composite of long exposure images. All right, I'm gonna go watch the sunset and next time I see you, we'll either be in the studio or at the second location. I'm not sure. The end. So uh, this is a local, uh, a local habitat preserve that I've featured a couple times on the channel. So I won't uh, belabor the introduction, but this park is called Fox Ridge Nature Park, and it is a, a prairie habitat restoration of the type that you see uh, recently springing up around the Midwest. And uh, besides the fact that conveniently our camera club just met here like 10 minutes ago for a, a nature photo walk, uh, this is a location that I like to feature for firefly photography because unlike the previous location, which was sort of dark and secluded woodlands. This is a nice open expanse of scenery with wildflowers that I think make a very striking presentation for fireflies. Uh, so colorful, vibrant, open, a very different uh, aesthetic from the previous photo. And uh, I'm gonna exercise the same technique as last time, uh, making long exposure time lapses. And then uh, I'm gonna get to work doing that because it's, it's now uh, right at sunset. So I expect the fireflies to be arriving soon. And I'll meet back up with you in the studio to demonstrate what hopefully I think will be a, a simple and easy way to process stunning firefly photos. So I'll see you there. Okay, I am back from shooting the fireflies at the nature park. Um, I have to admit that I, I, I cheated on you. I went ahead and processed these photos to make sure that the technique worked. And I'm happy to report that the result was probably better than I expected. I, I uh, likely used it as the thumbnail for this video, uh, but also it took way less time than I anticipated also. I think it took me about five seconds to process the entire photograph that you saw. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that um, in just a second. But first I thought that it bore explaining that the photo that I took last night at the nature park that did not turn out. So um, uh, I've never really explained like the nitty gritty of how to do firefly photography in the field. And I'll try to give a quick explanation of what went wrong with, with the second photo. I will substitute in a photo. So you still got two photos to look at. So stay tuned through this discussion and I'll show you the technique and two photos at the end. So the thing to keep in mind when you're photographing fireflies is you're photographing a light source and it is a momentary light source. And so you can't really set the exposure using the shutter speed. You you have to set it with the aperture and the ISO. And, uh, you know, the, the light intensity of the fireflies uh, doesn't change. And so it's it will be that exposure that you set with the aperture and the ISO that will be fixed throughout the entire night. So even if you have like 10 seconds, right, it's not going to make the fireflies brighter. They're not continuing to expose the sensor to more light after they sort of shut off, if you will. However, you can't simply um, expose for an unlimited amount of time because the landscape is still reflecting light from various light sources. Maybe it's the, you know, the evening dusk light reflecting down off the atmosphere. Maybe it's moonlight, as in an example that I'll show you in a second. Or in the case that I ran into the other night, uh, at the nature park, it was they had installed a new security light that I hadn't anticipated right where I had set up my composition. And so what, typically how this evolution goes is, you know, in the dusk hours when the fireflies first show up, you're exposing for like tenths of a second. Um, and so you get very like punctual fireflies that are just little dots. And then as the landscape gets darker and is reflecting less light, you can prolong the exposure times. So to, until you work towards the time where you're it working for a number of seconds and you have the firefly sort of streaking across the screen. And so depending on how you want to present the fireflies in your photo, uh, that will sort of determine what time of day you're working in. So when I worked in the woods, obviously it was very dark very early because it was a wooded scene. And so there was no problem getting nice long exposures there. Uh, however, because the uh, security light was keeping the landscape lit, um, I was continuously, I was really fighting to keep the fireflies visible against the landscape and I never really got a successful uh, ex exposure setting and I will show you like a reel of various exposure settings that I tried fighting to keep my composition. Uh, I'll show you those right now and then I'll show you a second uh, photo that I made recently on a moonlit night where the moon was still lighting the landscape, but not quite to the extent that a security light does. Uh, so I was, I had more success uh, having a uh, still with like point source fireflies, not like streaking fireflies, but I, I did have more success uh, capturing fireflies and a lit landscape 
uh, doing it by full moonlight. And uh, so I'm going to show you that time lapse now. And that in that time lapse, you can see the moon sort of streaking across the landscape. So um, I'm not going to bother with the one from the nature park, but I did enjoy bringing you along and showing you the uh, the scene. So uh, I thought I would keep that part in the video and substitute in this um, full moon time lapse instead. So, uh, but let's take a look on the computer here and I will show you because this is, we're going to fly through this. And then uh, afterwards, I also like to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using this technique. So um, I've got Photoshop open here, right? Um, I'm just going to go to file. This is so fast. File, import, video frames to layers. Okay. Now I've already sort of processed these through so that, you know, um, the ends are cut off and I've got nice neat files to work with. So um, I can choose one of these demos. So I'll load one in and what Photoshop is going to do now is take all the individual frames from the video, however many frames that was. Let me bring this dialog box up so you can see it. Um, so I can select a range. I can go from beginning to end. I can uh, choose to selectively re remove frames from it. So for example, if I've got a long time lapse, I can only do every three frames or something like that. Um, and I can set the start and end points with these arrow, these in and out arrows at the bottom, but I'm just going to hit okay and import the entire video. And you'll see that it, it brings all, it imports all the frames in and stacks them up in a stack of layers. So here there were 82 frames in this video and I've got a stack of 82 layers. Now this top frame is, you can see that it's kind of bright because this is where I was coming in to stop the time lapse with my flashlight. So I was lighting the landscape. So I'm going to um, disable that layer, select all the remaining layers and change the blending mode to lighten. And whoa, right? That's gonna cause all of those uh, fireflies, which are the brightest part of each uh, layer, to sort of filter to the top. And so what we've got is this very striking image of all of the fireflies. I, will, uh, I won't bother demonstrating the technique again for the second time lapse. I'll just show you what it looks like, but you can see a this is the second one would be an example of more when the fireflies are not streaky for like shorter exposures. Um, that will be the example with the uh, full moon. And you can see what the fireflies look like when they're just sort of like little points uh, dotting your landscape. And in that example also, though, you'll be more some lights there'll be some light on the landscape for variety. Now, uh, it's worth noting that you could uh, do this exact same technique for a higher quality using the intervalometer function of the camera uh, and just sort of have the camera automatically rolling exposures. And then you can work with raw files at full resolution. The, this is a 4K uh, HEVC encoded video, right? So there's some compression on top of some reduction in resolution. So if you were going to make a, a big print of this or something, um, you, you could use the intervalometer to get separate raw files and go through and make raw adjustments and all of that process. But then you're dealing with it, like in the case of this one, potentially like 80, 100, 150, who knows how many files to get this kind of uh, result. And th those are uh, full blown like 20, 30, 40, 50 megabyte raw files. So you're dealing with gigabytes of data, a much more intensive process on the computer. And then of course, having to deal with all those, those individual files. What's great about this is if I was just going to post this on social media or perhaps even make a small print, um, right with this process, I've got all the files enveloped in one video file. They all import into Photoshop very easily as the separate frames. And now I can export this, uh, again with relative ease. And so it's just a much simpler process, uh, especially I would imagine if you were going to do this maybe with a couple of cameras and maybe take a couple of time lapses per night, right? If this is a more ambitious project where you want to put out a lot of work, uh, especially you just have in mind to put them into social media or maybe even small prints, uh, this can really simplify that process. So, um, this can reduce this from like an hours a day workload to more of a few minutes of your day and having something to share uh, in more immediacy. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to point out is the camera. If you're working with the R7, which was the camera that we used to make these uh, images, there is also a multiple exposure mode and I haven't tried that, but it should be able to uh, produce a result similar to this uh, without even the need to bring it into the computer. So that also could be a more simplified method. Uh, the, the big downside I think to that is if there's a disturbance with the camera or if anything goes wrong in the middle of your two or three hour, you know, exposure, uh, you can't like go through and pull out the bad frames, right? So where I've sort of got the option to do that here. 
if there's some kind of interruption in the middle of the exposure, it basically ruins the photo. So I still think there are reasons that this could be preferable to that uh, method. But if you have tried it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I'm going to close out with uh, a review of the time lapses and I'll let you see that second image uh, with the moon. And, uh, and then we'll close it out for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe for more videos like this. And until I see you guys next time, you keep an eye out and a foot forward. And thanks for watching. Thank you.